What's up everybody? My name is DJ Carlo Atendido, two-time three-style DJ champion. And let me just say this. Beginner DJ controllers can do more than you think. And just because these things are intended for beginners, doesn't mean that a pro DJ can make these things look good. Now DJ controllers mostly do the same thing, which is play and mix music. And what separates equipment apart besides your build quality are the bells, whistles, and gimmicks they have. Some have limited features and some have everything. But these gimmicks can only go so far in the real world and when you're DJing from an audience who doesn't care how many decks you're using or what oscillation you're activating, modes like beat roll mode, beat slicer mode, and slip mode really shine. And these gimmicks are not only available in premium controllers, but beginner DJ controllers as well. The thing is, you don't know this because these corporate companies want you to spend that extra money and buy those premium controllers. But today, my friends, we are going to fight the power because today we're going to show these corporate companies that it's not what you use that matters, it's how you use it. Because today, I'm going to show you how to access these hidden functions and use them practically in a gig. Now all the songs that I'm going to use in this video are all available for download down below or right over here and you can really support this channel by donating and downloading as you go. Anyway, let's begin. We're going to be using the DDJ SB3 as an example here but most DJ controllers will have these hidden functions as well. Now we're going to explore three hidden functions that I find most practical to use in a DJ gig. So how do you access these functions? Simply press the shift button and select the alternate function you want to access. And press shift, then that button again to deactivate it. You can see these alternate functions by looking under the label of these buttons. So for example, if you press shift, then vinyl, you access slip mode as indicated on our software here. And slip mode basically lets you manipulate the track playing, but instead of disrupting the playback of the song with you messing around with it, it'll still keep on time. This is an easy way to complement your track with vinyl breaks and small scratches here and there. Let me show you. Now the next feature I want to talk about is the roll mode. And what roll mode does is that it manipulates the beat you activate it on and you can make the beat repeat in multiple ranges. It's a cool way to complement the song and to sort of remix on the fly. So on the DDJ SB3, it's located right under the effects fade button. Now the last feature I want to talk about is the beat slicer mode. And in the beginning, I personally hated this mode because I simply didn't know how to use it. But after messing around with it, I'm glad to say that this mode is by far my favorite because it's basically beat roll mode plus slip mode mixed into one mode plus more. So beat slicer mode allows you to chop a section of your track into eight slices on the fly, which are then controlled using the eight pads available on your controller. And to access it on the DDJ SP3, Simply press the shift button, then the pad scratch button. And that's it. Now these functions are fun and easy to use when you activate them, but also remember to deactivate them as well. Because these functions are hidden, they don't have corresponding LEDs to actually indicate that they're on or off. So just be more mindful of that. And on a side note, don't go crazy on these effects. 
I know it's fun and easy to use, but remember that moderation is key when it comes to DJing. Your job is not to do an exhibition set, your job is to impress the crowd and keep them dancing. Now if you guys enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on bell notifications. And with that said, thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you all in the next one. I definitely suggest you guys to first use whatever you have with you right now. So if that's your cell phone, if that's your laptop, then use that. But if you really want to get started in DJ, what's the best thing that you can buy? Definitely whatever you can afford. Use whatever that is to get you where you want to go. Remember, at the end of the day, it's not the, it's not the equipment you use, it's how you use it. Be it a phone, a computer, or like a traffic controller.